I move on to the talk by Teresa Fornaro, Computational Spectroscopy Studies of Nuclear Bases and Their Complexes. to everybody. I'd like to talk about computational spectroscopy studies of uh, nuclear bases and their complexes. Mm. Vibrational spectroscopy studies are very useful to characterize at molecular level the nature of the interactions between nuclear bases and solid supports such as components of interstellar dust. These investigations uh, are of interest in the astrobiological context to identify the role played by solid support to the origin of life. And um, these studies uh, provide also support for the interpretation of astronomical data detecting organic compounds in extraterrestrial environments. However, due to the great variety of interactions between adsorbated substrates and due to complex environmental factors, results of experimental spectroscopy studies are often difficult to interpret, even, uh, especially in low coverage conditions that are the most probable in extraterrestrial environments. And uh, even if some means can be obtained uh, by comparison with the experimental and uh, gas phase computational data, these are not sufficient for a complete characterization of the properties of such systems. Um, um, a factual determination of a, wide property, of a wide range of properties for such systems may be better achieved by employing computational simulations. And uh, in particular, uh, this work is aimed at identifying a reliable yet feasible computational procedure to analyze and assign infrared spectra of nuclear bases, uh, uh, solid support complexes, using both harmonic and unharmonic approximation to vibration frequencies, which is also a good compromise uh, to obtain reasonable structure and energies at a low computational cost. A plausible way of studying the intricate interactions characterizing such systems is through a multi-step strategy by performing studies firstly on isolated monomers, uh, secondly on isolated dimers, and finally on, on uh, multi-component configurations. Uh, I will discuss the first two stages, uh, focusing in particular on uh, the monomers uh, adenine, hypoxanthine, and cytosine, uracil, and thymine, and uh, uh, the hydrogen body in the sec, the uh, adenine and uracil dimers, and the heterodimer, adenine, naphthalene. Uh, density functional theory methods can be used having a low computational cost. And uh, a wide range of DFT methods have been validated for calculating an harmonic vibrational frequencies for a large set of isolated molecules. Uh, and B3LEAP, but also B3LEAP-D, exhibit the best behavior. B3LEAP is a widely extens an extensively validated method, widely used, because it provides good prediction for many molecular properties, including structure and vibration frequencies, with the required accuracy necessary for a quantitative comparison with the experiments. But for modeling a vibration spectra of weakly bound molecular complexes, uh, dispersion interactions should be taken into account because they could play a major role in determining the stability of the systems. Um, this kind of interaction may be modeled at a relatively low computational cost by using dispersion corrected density functional theory methods. Among the different approaches, we have chosen two popular and inexpensive methods, namely the semi-empirical dispersion correction D3 method and the pseudo-potential-based approach DCP uh, method, both in conjunction with the B3LIP functional. These methods have shown good performance in predicting binding energies and structural parameters for non-covalent adducts, but they haven't been validated yet for um, unharmonic vibrational frequencies. So we decided to study these two methods uh, to simulate unharmonic infrared spectra of nuclear bases and their complexes through the generalized second-order vibrational perturbation model approach, GVPT2, with the fully anharmonic calculation of frequencies and intensities. 
Well, here I show the deviations of computed vibrational frequencies of all nuclear bases in respect to experimental data and B3D results. A detailed statistical analysis of the uh, computed and harmonic vibrational frequencies in respect to experiments indicates that B3LEAP and B3LEAP-D3 uh, are in, in a good agreement with the experiments with the mean unsigned error of about 12 centimeters minus one for the full set of molecule. Um, and uh, maximum positive deviations not exceeding 35 centimeters minus one. Instead, DCP uh, shows uh, larger errors with the mean unsigned error of 24 centimeters minus one and the maximum positive deviations of 66 centimeters minus one. Uh, the good behavior of B3LEAP confirms that it can stand as a reference for the comparison between computational methods. Direct comparison between theoretical methods uh, allows to dissect different contributions to the overall anharmonic frequencies, namely the harmonic part and the anharmonic correction. And uh, the accuracy of the anharmonic correction is of great interest because uh, the harmonic part can be corrected through more expensive computations within uh, uh, hybrid schemes. And from this uh, comparison, uh, it emerges that uh, both harmonic and anharmonic vibrational frequencies computed with B3LEAP and B3LEAP D3 uh, are nearly equivalent, while uh, DCP frequencies show um, larger discrepancies with the mean unsigned error of uh, about 20 centimeters minus one on harmonic frequencies, 30 on anharmonic frequencies, and a small shift uh, in the um, of um, six centimeters minus one for the deviation between anharmonic shifts. Here I show the anharmonic infrared spectra of isolated dead in molecule uh, computed with the B3LIP, B3LIP D3 and DCP and compared with the experimental spectrum recorded in low temperature argometrics that has been generated uh, from the literature data. The inset shows uh, the uh, spectral region between uh, 1,500 and 1,700 centimeters minus one. We can see that uh, B3LIP and B3LIP D3 give uh, better predictions with respect to DCP. And um, uh, in particular, the experimental spectroscopy features shown in the inset are perfectly reproduced by B3LIP and B3LIP D3 anharmonic calculations, taking into account also the presence of relatively intense uh, non-fundamental transitions. These results couldn't be, couldn't be obtained uh, by application of scaling factors to harmonic frequencies because in this case only uh, fundamental bands are present in the spectra instead of a complex pattern, including uh, combination bands as we can see in, this, in the inset. Uh, the CP spectrum is complex too, but uh, the band position are shifted respect to experiments and uh, uh, it is characterized by different band pattern. Uh, here I report the counterpoise corrective binding energies and percentage mean absolute error of rotational constants of dimer structures compared to reference values. We have observed that B3LIP fails in the case of the staked dimers as expected for um, systems that mainly interact through dispersive forces, while uh, B3LIP D3 and DCP predict the reliable binding energies and structural parameters with a similar good accuracy. Regarding the calculation of binding energies, um, in the case of hydrogen bonded uh, structures, B3LIP gives uh, the, the worst results, while uh, D3 and DCP um, show a very good performance uh, and uh, provide rather similar values, making hard the assertion of which is the best approach. The same happens uh, in the case of the calculation of rotational constants and structural parameters. Uh, these are the deviations of harmonic and anharmonic vibrational frequencies of dimers computed with B3LIP DCP in respect to the B3LIP D3 method. Uh, we can see that even in the case of the dimers, the relative performance of these uh, two dispersive methods for calculating an harmonic vi vibrational frequencies, harmonic and anharmonic, uh, is the same that we have observed uh, also for the monomers with the mean unsigned error of uh, about uh, 20 centimeters minus one on harmonic frequencies, 30 on anharmonic frequencies, and uh, uh, a deviation between anharmonic shifts of 10 centimeters minus one. The maximum uh, 
mh, absolute discrepancy, uh, discrepancy is about 50 centimeters minus one. Um, then we can compare the uh, infrared spectra of the dimers with the monomer in order to investigate the effects of intermolecular interactions on the vibration frequencies on nucleobases. In the case of the hydrogen bonded adenine dimer, uh, the most significant shifts concern some vibrational modes of the amino group which is involved in the hydrogen bonds. The biggest one is the symmetric stretching of the amino group with the low frequency shift of uh, about um, 500 centimeters minus one. In the case of the stick adenine dimer, uh, the most important shifts involve some out of plan vibrational modes of the, um, of the amino group, uh, the torsion of the amino group in particular. Um, here I show the anharmonic infrared spectra of adenine dimers compared with the monomer. Uh, these figures uh, point out another important effect of intermolecular interaction, that is the uh, intensity increase for um, some vibrational modes that are highlighted in the red circles. As expected from, from the comparison of infrared spectra of the monomer and the dimers, important shifts of vibration frequencies of specific functional groups are observed. These correspond to proton donor and acceptor groups, which uh, could interconnect molecules through hydrogen bonds. And even in the case of the uh, stacked structure, significant shifts are observed for some out of plan vibrational modes. Uh, which are more influenced by the stake the configuration. Consequently, when considering nucleobases in condensed phases or adsorbed on solid supports, assignment uh, of spectroscopy feature based on gas phase data could be misleading, bringing to an incorrect interpretation of the spectra and of the functional groups that are involved in the interactions. And uh, therefore, uh, it is necessary to carry out computational simulations, not only for the isolated monomers, but especially for their complexes. And uh, the computational methods we have investigated between lip D3 and DCP show a good uh, performance and provide rather similar and reliable values, both for binding energies and structural parameters. Uh, for uh, the vibrational frequencies, D3 yields more accurate results. We can conclude that spectra simulated with dis dispersion corrected v 3 lip approaches pave a way for uh, the analysis of experimental data on nucleobasis complexes. Uh, I would like to thank the DREAMS team led by Professor Barone and in particular my supervisors, uh, Goshka Bixisko and Susanna Monti and Professor Barone for the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there questions? Please. Um, just a curiosity. Um, you made comparisons between some of the experimental data and some of your calculated frequency on the, on the frequency positions. But when I look at the stick spectra that you showed, there were a lot of differences in the intensity. So I wonder if you would be able to compare the oscillator strengths summing all these quantities, and that would be an indication whether the computed oscillator strength is comparable with the experimental one, just looking at the stick spectra. Have you tried to make any comparison of these intensities? No, not really, but it is a good suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> any more questions? Well, I have a question about the, the method you used. Is you, used, you, go, you are comparing the D3 method, which has some directionality in the computation of the dispersion interaction, and the DCP method, which in, include a symmetric dispersion around each atom. I'm, I'm just curious if you tried to use the dispersion the D2 methods, which is also symmetric dispersion, and without the acidic, the acidic hydrogen that is giving the overestimation of hydrogen bond in the D2 method of Grimm. Um, I tried the, the D2 uh, on the first stage of my studies, and uh, the vibration frequencies were the same that uh, B3LIP and B3LIP D3. So I haven't investigated uh, yet. Uh, the, the B3 D2. 
Okay, we should now thank again the speaker. Thank you. And, uh,